Coming up on Mountain News this morning, Governor Andy Bashir makes another visit to Eastern Kentucky to announce some major funding. And even though COVID-19 cases seem to be dropping across the U.S., they still remain high in our own region. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Alrighty, good morning again. 601, it's Tuesday. I'm Dakota Makris. Ooh, it is Tuesday, isn't it? Man, I thought it'd be. I'm sorry, y'all. Let's take it over to Brandon for a second. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, oh, man. Listen, you've been working for a few days, so it's not technically your Tuesday. Gosh. Technically, yeah. your Wednesday, too. Well, you know what? I'm off Friday, so. There you go. It makes up for it, I guess. That's right. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Forecast this morning as we head out the door. Again, a few clouds, but not a whole lot of action out there. More fog than anything. We've been watching a couple of showers back off to our west there, but they're trying to dive south. I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. They're going to just miss us out that way going toward I-65. London and Corbin Airport, one of the few spots this morning without fog. 65 down that way. Dew points already in the mid-60s. Barometric pressure. That 30.01, which is basically stable. That means high pressure is still in dominant control across our region with the headlines there. 58, Clint Woods, 68, Jackson. Everybody else falling in between. Normal day on the coffee meter as you head out the door and your donut forecast for the next dozen hours as the donuts get cleared away. You'll see temperatures will climb into the mid to upper 80s and sunshine will take back over after the clouds start us off early this morning. Dakota? All right, Brennan, thank you. Well, Governor Andy Bashir made a stop in Floyd County yesterday at the Mountain Arts Center. Our buddy Forbes was there and has updates were given on a couple of major projects in the Big Sandy region. And the cabinet Two projects. Today's announcement is going to open the doors for us in Eastern Kentucky for economic opportunity. Paving the future for Eastern Kentucky. A little more than $4.1 million for the Dawkins Line Rail Trail. Developing tourism targets. Funding for phase two is going to be announced next spring, so there is more to come. And making the moves to finish up a 60 year commitment. And it will be an investment to help make the region we love a better place to live, work, and raise our children. Governor Andy Bashir says the final piece of the Four Lane Mountain Parkway expansion will add a 13 mile stretch from Salyersville's US 460 to Highway 404 in Prestonsburg without impacting the connecting road drivers currently rely on. No disruption. It's going to be safer. You're going to be able to move uh, faster. This is truly a win that's going to, to protect our people and open up this area. And while it will still be at least five years until the progress is complete, we now have under construction every section but this last part. So we are so close. Officials are excited for the road ahead. This is not only a road, this is a lifeline. This is our, a lifeline to our future. In Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Well, while the parkway expansion caused a lot of excitement, Governor Bashir says he's just excited about that $4.1 million investment in paving the Dawkins Line Rail Trail, a project for which his mother, former First Lady Jane Bashir, has been an advocate. Well, nearly two months following the historic flood that damaged several schools in Knott County, many students are finally back in the classroom, and their first day back was yesterday. The district's original start date was August 10th, with the devastation making that go impossible. But now, students, faculty, and staff are together once again, aiming to have a happy, healthy, and normal school year. The past week has been crazy. Teachers and staff members have been in here from sunup till sundown. Um, so I think to finally be here today to see the kids coming into the building definitely makes all this hard work worth it. Knott County School Superintendent Brent Hoover says the return to school has given many students, faculty, and staff a sense of relief following weeks of uncertainty. The governor was also in Knott County yesterday presenting flood relief checks and says he believes the flood caused more than $1 billion in damage across eastern Kentucky. And more than 300 people are without water in an eastern Kentucky county after a dry couple of weeks have left their reservoirs low and pipes strained. Our Keaton Hall has more about the situation. Crews are rushing to patch water pipe leaks in Harlan County as hundreds are left without water near Everts. We've got to get water built up so much because when we turn the pumps on to go elsewhere, we can get ourselves back to square one. So we've got to get our tanks built up enough to where it won't hurt. 
Even with Fields crews working overtime, refilling the system can't be rushed. And, and I imagine that this will probably, in all honesty, probably continue on in to Thursday or Friday before people's got water everywhere. The Yoakum and Clover Fork Volunteer Fire Departments have turned into temporary water donation centers. They had contacted and let us know there was a water issue if we was going to be available to distribute water. I told them absolutely. So uh, they sent the water and we come up and we've been working ever since. Canterbury himself without water. Personally, I didn't even realize how unprepared we was when I come home to take care of my animals outside. We have four dogs and looked and their buckets are empty. On Monday alone, Canterbury said they had given water to nearly 100 families. It is going to be a process and we do ask for uh, people's continued patience and we appreciate it. Uh, not only patience, prayers help us, help us find this, you know, get this thing fixed. Folks can get water on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. at the Clover Fork Fire Department. In Harlan County, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. Both Black Mountain and North Everett's Elementary are affected by the water outages, but Fields doesn't believe it will affect school hours. COVID-19 cases are dropping nationally, but still high here in eastern Kentucky. The region is in the red, signaling a, as a high-risk area for COVID despite the high numbers. A lot of schools and businesses have been lenient on masking, which Cumberland Valley District Public Health Director Christy Green says is okay as the region continues learning how to live with the virus. Um, there are improved treatments, um, so we're seeing fewer people um, with severe illness. We're seeing fewer people dying from it. Um, so we really are learning to live with COVID. Health officials say despite the relaxing guidelines, communities should still be cautious. Gun violence continues to plague Lexington, and now one group is hoping a class teaching a very specific technique can save lives. As Grayson Passmore explains, every minute counts in an emergency situation. Pack some more. Yeah, pack some more. There's nothing more tragic um, than death and a death that could have been prevented. Which is why Bailey McCain, the trauma outreach coordinator at UK Healthcare, is so passionate about the Stop the Bleed program. But keeping more blood inside the body than outside the body is how we're going to save that life as a bystander in need. McCain offers the free training to anyone wanting to learn, teaching people how to remain calm when someone is hurt, whether from a fall, a car accident, or a gunshot wound, starting with calling 911. And we're going to just bear down. Then shows you how to stop the bleeding using anything you might have around. Do, do they have a towel that they can use to apply pressure with or to put over the wound? Do they have, are, are they wearing a belt that they can utilize as a tourniquet or a purse strap? Because in that moment, your, your mind and your adrenaline is just continuously rushing. Just last Wednesday, a Lexington mother used her quick thinking and first aid kit she keeps in her car to help a young teen who had been shot in a shopping center on Oxford Circle. It's that same resourcefulness McCain and trauma education coordinator Amy Peel want to teach people of all ages. On the playground. Older siblings watch their younger siblings. Age group doesn't discriminate in trauma, as Bailey had pointed out. So just giving them the skills in that one thing that may stick in their brain is the one thing that will make a total difference for that patient. That was Grayson Passmore reporting. McCain says it can take seven to 10 minutes for emergency services to arrive, but it only takes two to five minutes for someone to bleed out. The program works with community resource leaders to give the training and free kits to people of all ages. Six ten here on this Tuesday morning. We're tracking a little bit of rain just outside of our area, but if you look at live pinpoint Doppler radar, you're like, wait a minute, all that's rain? No, that's all fog. This is rain down into parts of East Tennessee. It's crossing the border near Burksville, going over toward Cookville this morning. So again, no major issues, and it's all traveling south. I just wanted to point it out because I'm sure some of you were looking at like, is that moving our way? Absolutely not. It is going to the south this morning. Temperatures 58 Clint Woods. 68 Jackson, 66 Somerset, Ashland, Logan this morning, 65 London, 62 Irvin, 61 Jonesville, and 60.
65 in Middlesbrough statewide. We got a lot of sensors out back out toward Bowling Green, Clarkville, and Owensboro there. 66 across the river in Cincinnati, 68 in Knoxville, 75 in the Music City, one of our warm response this morning. 72 in the Derby City and 71 in Paducah right now. 83 by 1 o'clock this afternoon. 86 is your forecast high a little bit later today. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Well, coming up here on Mountain News this morning, election season is almost here, and today might be the perfect day for you to register to vote. That's on the way next.